Hi friends and today we are going to discuss independent branches. Uh, so theory part related to independent branches. Already we discussed in the previous classes about the dependent branches. So particularly how to know the result of the branch by the data source method, stock data source method and final accounts method. And we discussed all the problems uh, in ICI study metal from 1 to 10. And uh, now we are going to discuss in detail about the independent branches. Before uh, so knowing the independent branches, let us have a, a small, very small recap about the uh, dependent branches. What I said in the dependent branches, so completely the branch books maintained by the head office, branch head office will send the goods to branch and uh, even all the expenses of the branch usually made by the head office. So all the books related to branch maintained by the head office only. So head office is in a position to know the profit of the branch or loss of the branch. So branch will not have any set of books. But of course, so branch can maintain some stock register like debtors register. So to have certain information with them, they used to maintain what is the stock left with him and how much debtors balance is there still to collect. So to know this information, some memorandum registers or memorandum accounts are maintained, but complete set of books related to branch maintained by the head office. So head office is in a position to know the profit of the branch under the uh, particularly dependent branches. So there are so many methods to know debtors method, stock debtors method, final accounts method. So in all these methods, of course, result profit loss will be same, but the entries and uh, uh, solving the procedure of the sum is completely different. Now today we are going to discuss about the independent branches. What does it mean independent branches? This is also very simple to understand. Independent branches means completely the branch can maintain its own set of books like head office. So it can maintain the journal ledger trial balance and it can prepare final accounts also. So all the complete set of books maintained by the branch itself which means branch is in a position to know the profit by itself okay so when head office will provide the branch trial uh, branch will provide the trial balance to the head office and uh, all the branch related operating results can be incorporated in the head office books it is branch trial balance is like a basis so what happened in the branch to know so that in this particular procedure branch can maintain all set of books like uh, journal ledger trial balance and once trial balance is there and final accounts can be done in the simplest manner so and uh, branch itself will be in a position to know the result so need not to wait for the head office but the thing is and uh, particularly here in case of independent branches but of course branch can maintain the and all set of books and even trial balance and by the trial balance final accounts everything may be done by the branch but still branch will maintain head office account and head office will maintain a branch account always like uh, in the head office books branch will be like a debtor means you have to collect the money from branch because usually sales made by the branch and money to be collected from the branch by the head office so in the head office books always like branch like a debtor whereas in the branch books head office like always like a creditor in the branch books head office always like a creditor in the branch books head office like a creditor in the head office books branch always like a debtor but of course with similar amounts and obviously how much the branch has to pay to the head office and the head office is supposed to collect the amount same amount to be collected so that vice versa in the books both books like debtor creditor they appear particularly when you see that in the branch accounts head office account is nothing but like a branch capital branch assets minus liabilities branch net worth branch net worth is nothing but like a head office account or nothing but branch capital it is known in the branch books head office account represents like a capital which is branch capital which is head office account what we say here so usually branch will maintain head office account head office maintains branch account in the branch account head office like a creditor in the head office book branch like a debtor so how entries can be recorded in the books of 
say head office branch account will be maintained or in the branch head office account same entries but of course if you write here debit and there it should be credit if you write anything credit there it should be debit just in the reverse manner so just i am explaining only one particularly in the books of branch how head office account is maintained so example once you know this one completely and very simple to how to know in the books of head office and they used to maintain the branch account the entries are exactly almost like a reverse so that if you know particularly in one particular books and how the other account is prepared and very simple to understand the another one also so therefore i would like to explain particularly how the branch will maintain so head office account okay so in the already i said that in the branch books always head office is like a creditor and credit balance head office account is nothing but represent like a capital in the branch branch asset minus branch liability is a branch net worth or branch net worth represents like a capital or it is nothing but like a head office account head office account in the branch like a capital account that's all so always it can have a credit balance clear is it in the branch books like a head office always have a credit balance let us see how the entries are written here if you observe that particularly star symbol is given for three those three are difficult to understand a bit remaining are very very simple to understand how the entries are recorded let us see how simple when goods received from head office simply enter goods from head office to head office account in the head office by goods received from head office goods from head office to head office in the head office by goods from head office whereas goods sent to head office head office account data to goods account in the head office to goods sent to head office cash received from head office cash to head office in the head office by cash okay by cash cash sent to head office head office account data to cash account these are all very simple and these two also very very simple to understand and obviously when the in the branch books when the profit pnl account is done and profit generated and that profit should be always to be given to whom head office and it should the whatever the profit earned by the branch in the pnl account and it should make the head office as a creditor because that profit should be given to the head office so how branch can write the entry pnl account data to head office account in the head office account by pnl profit made exactly the last is the reverse entry so goods received from head office goods to head office goods sent to head office head office to goods cash received from head office cash to head office cash sent to head office head office to cash profit made by the branch pnl account data to head office in the pnl profit is known in the pnl profit whatever we know and it should be given to head office and we can make head office as a creditor so head office account data to pnl in the pnl by head office so, so sorry pnl account data to head office in the head office by pnl and obviously loss is a reverse entry and very very importantly we should be very clear about these three entries and of course we should learn very carefully that's why star symbol is also given let us check one by one first this one what is this payment made by the branch for purchase of a branch fixed asset a fixed asset payment made by whom branch to purchase what a fixed asset but important thing why head office in the head office account it is debited when asset is purchased by the branch payment is also done by the branch and why particularly and <coughs> this kind of entry is going to take place so i am going to explain here first one here normally asset is purchased by the branch no doubt and of course that asset is normally utilized by the branch itself but that asset account is usually maintained in the head office books as a branch i bought the asset and i use the asset but that asset account is maintained in the books of head office why because to have a proper control to have a proper control so head office uh, would like to maintain the asset account asset physically with me i bought physically with me i am using but asset as per books it is there in the head office then how i am going to write asset 
purchased by branch but the asset maintained by head office then branch is going going to write in this manner asset account at auto bank when it is asset is purchased but that asset is as per accounts it is given to head office physically it is with me as per to maintain the account books it is as per books it is there with head office therefore i am going to write as this asset is transferred to head office head office to asset asset account at auto bank account when purchase is done and because it is a maintained this asset account maintained by the head office physically with me then i used to write head office account data to asset so when you cancel the asset and asset if you mix both of them entry head office to bank head office account data to bank therefore in the head office account you have to write as to bank head office account in the head office account we have to write to bank this is what asset purchased by branch asset used by branch physically asset is in the hands of branch office but as per account records it is in the head office books only generally it is maintained in this manner to have a proper control on all the branch assets so by the head office okay and another one depreciation on branch fixed assets obviously what normally the branch is supposed to write the entry depreciation account data to asset depreciation is a non cash expense <coughs> so the debit and asset is reduced so you have to put into credit depreciation account data to asset but depreciation is okay no doubt that is non cash expense should be debited in the branch but uh, asset is reduced in the head office books because asset is maintained by the head office in the asset is reduced in the head office books but asset is not utilized by the head office so you have to compensate that amount to the head office so you can make the head office as a creditor so depreciation is a non cash expense debit but you cannot reduce your asset in your books because asset is not with you asset is maintained in the head office books asset is reduced in the head office books but asset is not utilized by the head office so as a branch you have to compensate that amount to head office make the head office as a creditor so all the time depreciation entry is recorded depreciation account data to head office or pnl account data to head office sometimes all the pnl account is already done and depreciation is not recorded right now and then depreciation to be recorded right now pnl account is already done profit is already known and then profit should be corrected right now therefore <coughs> instead of writing depreciation and you can debit to pnl directly so depreciation to head office or pnl to head office both are correct so depreciation or this is what uh, second one i explained depreciation on branch assets which account is kept in the head office books so depreciation or pnl account data to head office in the head office by depreciation or depreciation on fixed assets or by pnl account also you may write it okay so this is the second one right and come to the third one what is the third one so expenses look at here expenses incurred by head office and charged to branch sorry this is a branch okay so sometimes say let us say advertisement advertisement amount spent around 1 crore by the head office but out of that 1 crore certain amount related to the branch and obviously that should be incurred by the branch but of course already paid by the head office so then how branch will write normally when it is going to write the entry expense account data to cash or bank but here it is the branch expense no doubt you can debit it but it is already paid by the head office so branch can make the head office as a creditor because branch should compensate that amount to the head office because already paid by the head office but the expense related to branch so that it is going to write a branch expenses paid by the head office so in that case branch can write simply entry expense to head office or p and l to head office anything is okay expense or p and l account data to head office account obviously in the head office account by expense account or by p and l account that's all okay so these the three are the very important entries here and while writing in the branch books of course head office account once you know how to maintain the head office account in the branch books and very simple to know how head office will maintain the branch account exactly the entries will be reversed that's all okay we can have a great discussion about them definitely okay so and this is the way normally 
branch can maintain the head office account similarly and even head office also can maintain the branch account entry is only simply reversed moreover always i said in the branch books like head office having credit balance in the head office books branch will have a debit balance like a debtor with similar amounts and another important area what we are supposed to discuss in the independent branches even though independent branches they can maintain complete set of books and they may have journal ledger everything they may prepare trial balance and set of final accounts also but still some transactions will take place in between head office and branch office still some transactions will take place between head office and also branch office and how they can be recorded by both branch office as well as branch office some transactions will take place in between the branches branch to branch inter branch transactions how they can be recorded so we can discuss them tomorrow in detail uh, how to record the entries uh, transactions which have taken place between the head office and branch office and how to write the journal entries which have taken place between the branch to branch inter branch transactions transactions between the head office to branch transfer transactions between branch to branch how to write the entries okay and we can discuss those entries and tomorrow okay bye